Hey guys, it's Charles with Premium B, and in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to create a split diopter look in post-production. Throughout the process, we'll look at the pros and cons of doing it this way, and how you can add imperfections to your shot for a more authentic look. All right guys, so if you aren't familiar with what a split diopter is, it's essentially a lens element that goes on the front of your camera lens and allows you to have two different areas of your frame in focus at the same time. When it's used in movies, the majority of the time there'll be one person on the side that's in focus close to the camera while also focusing on things happening in the background. If you do a quick Google search of split diopter shots, you'll see numerous examples from movies. Now obviously the premise of this tutorial is to recreate a split diopter look as authentically as possible. Now if you have access to a real split diopter and you're actually on location, that's certainly gonna be a faster option. But by doing the effect in post, we're gonna give ourselves more leeway and options with the final edit. Approaching the shot in a very similar way that a director like David Fincher might, with techniques that are often referred to as invisible VFX. Now a lot of times when a split diopter look is created in post, it's simply two shots at different focal lengths spliced together and neither subject crosses the dividing line. And that option can work just fine, especially if it works for your particular shot. But you may have noticed in my example shot that both subjects actually cross the focus dividing line. And this is something that's subtle, but really helps sell the idea this is a real split diopter shot. With that said, let's go ahead and start breaking down how to create this look. Because we aren't using a real split diopter, we need two different shots, one of each subject in focus, and the big secret with this is that we need to film the closer subject on a green screen. This is what will allow us to isolate them in post and allow each subject to freely cross the focus dividing line. This also opens up a lot more possibilities for us in the edit, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Now for the shot on the green screen, I just used a pop-up collapsible green screen, so you don't need anything fancy. If you want the lighting to match for your foreground subject, just go ahead and film them at the same location where you film your background. Again, that's why I use that pop-up green screen, and that's really gonna give you the best results. Now let's jump over to After Effects and start creating this shot. If you guys want, you can download the project file from the Premium Beat blog, which also includes the footage that I'm gonna be using, and the link for that will be in the description. All right, first in After Effects, let's grab the green screen footage and add it to a new composition. Now we need to key out this green screen. And what I'm gonna do first, because I'm really not on this side of the screen, I'm just gonna select the mask tool here and just do a quick rectangle mask really around where I'm at on the screen. And to key this, I'm actually gonna use a preset by Adobe, and it's actually the way they recommend to key green screen footage in After Effects without any plugins. And I've got the effects and presets panel open over here, and I'm just gonna type in key. And when I do that, you're gonna see under the image utilities presets here, we have this really long titled one. I'll drag this out. It says key light plus key cleaner plus advanced spill suppressor. So I'm just gonna click that and drag it onto my footage. And I've had a lot of luck using this preset. You can see it applied three different effects. They all kind of work in tandem here to give you a really clean key. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this over. I'm actually gonna close this because we don't need this anymore. And let's just navigate over here to the effects. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail with how to key this footage out. I'll do the basics here, but if you do want more of a rundown on keying green screen footage, I did an article earlier this year on the Premium Beat blog, which follows the same exact technique. And I'll have a link to that on the blog post for this tutorial if you wanna check that out. I'll just go ahead and select the eyedropper tool here. We'll go ahead and click the color. I'm gonna change the view here to be screen mat temporarily and come down here to the screen mat options. I'm gonna raise this up just a little bit. Pull the white down. Set the shrink here to negative 2.6. I'm gonna set the softness here to three. And the key with this preset is with the view here, you wanna make sure you change this back to intermediate result, not the final result because the intermediate result is what works with these following two effects, the key cleaner. I'll go ahead and leave that on and check on to reduce the chatter with that. And then I'm also gonna turn on the advanced spill suppressor. And you can see it removes a little bit more of that green. It's kind of coming in around the hair there. But now I'm coming out here and go ahead and toggle on the transparency. And we can see we have a really nice and effective key for this footage. And again, one of the major benefits about doing this effect in post is that we have the liberty now to move the subject around. If I wanna reposition myself somewhere differently on the screen, I'm actually gonna move myself over a little bit to give me more room for the vehicle on this side. And now let's go ahead and navigate back up here to the project panel. And we're gonna go ahead and select the vehicle footage and let's add it to a new composition as well. And I'm just gonna right click here, go to the composition settings. I'll just name this my main composition. And go ahead and click okay. 
Now along the same lines of the invisible VFX, kind of that David Fincher-esque post-production techniques, this shot was actually the vehicle reversing away because I just had it already parked there exactly where I wanted it to be. And that way I didn't have to worry about, you know, getting it to line up perfectly with that tight window. So what we're gonna do with this, I'm just gonna select the footage here, right click, and we're gonna go up to time and then time reverse layer. And now when we do that, we can go ahead and play this and the vehicle is actually going to come right into the position we need it to be and it's going to stop right there. Now let's go ahead and add in our green screen composition. I'll just drag and drop it in here on top of the vehicle footage. And I'll just move this back to the very beginning here. And now for the blur we're going to apply, we need to actually create a gradient ramp. So I'm just going to right click here and do a new solid. We'll just call this grad. And the color of it doesn't really matter here. Just make sure it's comp size. Go ahead and click OK. And with that layer selected, let's come here to Effect, and under Generate, we're going to apply a Gradient Ramp. And this is really going to kind of be our split diopter controller for what's in focus on one side and what's out of focus on another. So I'm going to have the black side be on this side, so I'm going to select that Start Ramp Point. I'm just going to move it down here, kind of close to mid-center. And the same thing with the white point, so you can see we're going kind of across this way. And so I'm just going to kind of get this lined up. Doesn't have to be perfect because again, it wouldn't be perfect with a real split diopter. But this looks pretty good right now as a nice starting point. And I'm gonna move this grad solid here all the way to the bottom so we don't see that. We're just gonna need to refer that uh, when we're using the camera lens blur effect. Now let's go ahead and start by applying the camera lens blur to the background. I'm actually gonna just solo the vehicle footage there for the background so we can kind of see everything that's happening. And with that footage selected, let's come here to effect. And under blur, we're gonna apply a camera lens blur. Now one thing I do wanna mention is that this effect does render a little bit slower than most because it is trying to create more of a realistic bokeh-like look. So if you do experience some lag, that's pretty normal again with this effect. Uh, the first thing I wanna check on here is repeat edge pixels on this. So we're not getting any fraying around the edges. And I'm gonna dial the blur up here, maybe something like 25. So you can see we're getting some nice kind of organic looking bokeh back there, working nicely with the sunlight and the leaves. I'm gonna set the roundness here to something like 25 as well, just so it's not kind of that really sharp hexagon shape. And then where the magic really starts to happen with this is under the blur map. So you see we have an option for a layer. And on this, I'm gonna select that grad solid that we created. And what we need to do over here under source, we need to set this to effects and mass, so it'll take into effect that gradient ramp effect we applied. So once I do that, you can now see we're getting kind of that split diopter look where this is out of focus. And then on this side for the background, that is in focus. And if yours is backwards, just go ahead and select this Invert Blur Map option there. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that because this is correct for me because I want the subject on this side to be the one that's in focus. And if we just go ahead and move down here in the timeline, we'll see the vehicle pulls over into the focus area for that side. So now let's go ahead and just unsolo that vehicle footage there for the background. And with it selected, I'm actually going to select that camera lens blur effect and I'm going to hit Control C, Command C on a Mac to copy that effect. And let's go over here to the green screen footage and just go ahead and control V to paste that. And when we do, we can now see it got blurred, but all we need to do is come up here and check on to invert the blur map. And once we do that, we can now see we're getting more of a split diopter look. Now what's really cool about this now is this gradient layer we've got is really gonna act like our split diopter controller. So if I select that and then select this gradient ramp effect, you can see as I move these two points around, it's actually gonna change kind of where the blur cutoff is. So if I move those two, it may be a little bit delayed again because the camera lens blur effect renders quite slow. So let's move these back over here. And I can kind of get my face kind of starting to go into the blur. With that, you can see how that's working. But I'm just gonna have these back to kind of the default where they were in the middle. You don't wanna have them too far apart wide because again, it's gonna be just a single glass element there. It's pretty sharp with the fall off. There is gonna be kind of a somewhat of a gradual fall off with something like maybe like that wide, but you don't want it to be really wide across your composition. Now this is looking pretty good and you really wanna lean into the imperfections that you might get. So if I move back here to the beginning, I should cross over. You can see I'm crossing over and I'm kinda of getting blurred here on my shoulder. And again, that's something that would really happen with a real split diopter. And, and you can see the vehicle over here, obviously on this side's blurred quite a bit. So I would definitely recommend letting these imperfections occur on your footage because again, it kinda of helps sell that this is a more of a realistic split diopter shot. Now one thing I did notice over here later, I'm getting a little bit of an edge here on the side of my green screen footage. I'm gonna go back to that green screen composition and I think I know where I can fix this. So under the settings, under the key cleaner here, I think I forgot to bring this edge radius down a little bit. 
So I'm gonna lower that so it kind of clips that just a little bit more. If we come back over here to the main composition, that should help improve the look of that. Now along the same lines with the imperfections, we can lean into that a little bit more by applying a few other effects to this. One thing I definitely wanna apply is some chromatic aberration. And that's something that's pretty common with a split diopter because you are putting another glass element in front of an existing lens. And you can create a chromatic aberration completely in After Effects with no plugins. But a much faster way to do it, and one I recommend, is by using a free plugin from Plugin Everything. It's called Quick Chromatic Aberration. And I'll have a link for where you can find that on the blog post, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use that for this tutorial because it's so quick and easy. So I'm just gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'll move this to the very top of all of my footage and come up here to Effect once you have the plugin installed. And then I've got Plugin Everything right here in Quick Chromatic Aberration 2. And once I've applied that, I've got transparency on here, so my footage kind of looks a little bit different. But if yours looks like this, also just turn off this unmolt right there, and that will go ahead and make your footage look correct again. But if we zoom in here, I just want a little bit of kind of chromatic fringing on the edge. And we can kind of see on the edge of my hairline and my ear right there. I'm just going to come over here to the scale, and I'm going to set this to be 100.3. So very gradual and you can see we're just getting a nice kind of that chromatic aberration look here on the edge of everything. Another thing I might do is tweak the background footage just a little bit if it's a little too tack sharp compared to my subject here. I might just come back to my vehicle footage and just do a quick gauge and blur on that. So I'll just go to blur and gauge and blur. And I might set this on something really low like four, just a little bit of a blur and make sure repeat edge pixels is on for that. You know, nothing too extreme, just to kind of, again, adding a little bit more of an imperfection. And one thing that's really going to accent nicely on the bokeh background is going to be some film grain. And there's some free film grain you can download from Shutterstock. I'll have a link for that on the blog post as well. And that's what I've got here in the project for this tutorial. So I've got some 35 millimeter film grain. I'll just drag and drop this in above everything and just set this to overlay. And then if we zoom in here, we can really see that grain appearing on that bokeh background check that on and off you can see the difference that makes and now we can go ahead and take a look at the final result of this and obviously i highly recommend applying another layer of color correction if you want to match kind of the tone of your project all right guys hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial please give us a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to download that project file if you want to go ahead and break that down even further and i'll catch you guys on the next one